So welcome everyone uh, to the Humanities Podcasting Symposium. Uh, my name is Nefise uh, and I will be moderating this workshop today. Um, our workshop is called Assigning Podcasts as Texts in the Classroom. Um, I assume you already know the name, but I just wanted to repeat. Um, I have a PhD in Comparative Literature from University of Toronto. I graduated in 2020, that's just last year into a pandemic, and I'm currently on the academic job market. Um, so I'm an avid listener of podcasts. I don't have my own podcasts. I, um, at least for the time being, I'm just a listener. And my interests is I was putting together a syllabus for a course that I'm interested in exploring like human artificial intelligence um, interaction. And for this course, uh, I, I just um, chanced upon a podcast called Sandra by Gimlet Media. And I was thinking how wonderful it would be to actually incorporate this um, podcast into my syllabus, but um, I wasn't sure if it, I wasn't sure how to handle that, like how I am going to approach this podcast. Um, are, are, are we going to apply the same tools that we use while analyzing a text to the podcast? Or just like I was pondering on all those questions when I came across the posting for the symposium. And I thought it would be great to part of this conversation. And that's what brought me here today. Um, so today we have a great lineup, um, amazing speakers, and I would like to introduce them to you. Our first speaker today is Lena Metius uh, from University of Duisburg Essen. Mm -hmm. And she started a queer literature podcast early this year to use in a queer literature seminar she was teaching. And the podcast allowed uh, her students to hear the scholars whose texts they were reading talk about their work, which sounds fantastic. I can't hear, I can't wait to hear more about this. Our second speaker is Derby Orcutt of, from North Carolina State University. He's also a, a, a podcast creator. He, uh, and he assigns his students to create podcasts which sounds very interesting. Uh, I would definitely love to hear more about this, how this works. And our last speaker today is Daniel Dissinger from uh, University of Southern California. He is the producer of two podcasts, Writing Remix podcast and the Nostalgia Task podcast. I just tuned in before the workshop and both sounds really interesting and I will be a listener from now on. Um, so, I will leave uh, the floor to Lena today. Uh, Lena, can you hear me? Lena? Is I Lena here? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Lena's here actually. Oh, no, okay. How about we continue with our second speaker? Uh, Darby, are you here? I'm right here. Thank you so I much. <laughs> Hi. I'm, I'm Darby Orcutt from North Carolina State University. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm an interesting, I'm an interesting uh, place with this. I've been using um, podcasts in my courses for many years now. Um, wow. Starting out, um, I actually, um, I, I was not, you know, but I say that I was not one of these podcast people. Um, I just, I, 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 I still to this day consider myself probably an average consumer of, of podcast. I, um, it's a, it's a very prevalent format. It's an engaging format. Um, but I'm not, I'm not one of these people who, you know, is listening to podcasts all the time and, you know, <laughs> so, um, but I find them so useful in, in the, in the classroom. Um, so I'm at, I'm at NC State University. Um, my primary uh, faculty appointment there is as a librarian, um, but I've also been teaching uh, for, oh gosh, 20 years now at NC State. Um, I also teach as an adjunct um, at uh, another university down the road you may have heard of, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, and in, I've used podcast 
um, with my students, both undergraduate students, graduate students, and in, in, in a couple of different um, disciplinary, area, disciplinary areas where I teach. Um, I started in with them because um, a lot of the courses that I teach are um, cultural studies courses and podcasts, of course, uh, cover a lot of what's going on and what's current um, with our culture. So I, I started using these in my death course. Um, I, I, I use uh, podcasting extensively in my teaching on uh, science, society, and the supernatural, or the uh, uh, paranormal, rather. Um, and I, um, I have evolved over this time from using, um, using podcasts as, as texts that I assign, which I still do, because I find the students really engage with these um, in ways that they oftentimes don't with readings. Um, a lot of the times stu our students are busy, they're, they're, you know, they, but they still have a commute and they can pop on and listen to a podcast in a way that they wouldn't you know, actually read the, <laughs> the assigned uh, text that's given to them. Um, and I evolved from that to um, also having the students create podcast and then using the student created podcast as text for the course. So it's, it's very nice because you can get um, reflections of students, you can get them to investigate a particular topic um, and then bring that content back to the course. So it's, it's kind of like the way in the, in the olden days we would, have, uh, we would have had students come and do presentations. Um, they package up their presentation, it becomes uh, an object that you can then assign to the class, which is really nice. I've also, I've also um, done that where I've gone through the podcast and while, uh, while evaluating them and grading them, um, pull out little snippets of them and then play those in class. Um, that worked really well uh, teaching remotely um, because I could, I could uh, reflect the, the students and their peers um, experiences and, and work um, back at the, at the class as a whole. And um, let me tell you, a signing podcast is fantastic. It's the, it's the only way that I have found to actually have students um, draft and revise their work. You can require them to turn in a draft of a paper, give them wonderful comments and have them revise it and very few actually do it. Um, but in podcasting, what I do is I have them write a script, turn in the script, get feedback on that. But then what they do is as they, as they record that script and they hear themselves speaking, they want to change it. They want to revise it. <laughs> and so um, they go through this iterative process with their writing, um, with that inscription process that I, I just can't get in, in sheer textual form. Um, I've also, um, uh, as, as our chair mentioned, I, I've also moved into, um, with my graduate course last year, I actually moved into the creation of a podcast. Um, I was teaching at that time in the pandemic, I was teaching, uh, what was my first wholly remote course, um, and my first wholly asynchronous course. And so I was thinking about the wonderful opportunities that um, I wouldn't have in an asynchronous course to, you know, to bring guest speakers in. So how could I do that? Um, and then, of course, the 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 world is your oyster uh, uh, when you don't you don't have to physically bring people to the classroom. So uh, it ended up being just a wonderful way. I got some amazing uh, guests and folks. Uh, honestly, uh, some prominent figures uh, that I probably couldn't have gotten to come to a class, but were more than happy to be part of a podcast. Um, and so, um, again, it's so, there, and again, there's the assigning of text all along here from the, the um, from the, you know, just finding things that are out there in the wild to assign 
to having student creation and assigning those, to having my own creation and assigning those. Um, so it's been an evolution for me. Um, I am also very proud to see, I have at least one student who over this period has um, gone through the same evolution. Um, I had a student in one of, one of, if not the very first classes where I assigned podcasts, who got interested in podcasting, ended up starting his own podcast uh, at, on the campus. Um, I invited him back when I was assigning students podcast and had him talk about how to create a podcast, which was wonderful for the students to have that, that kind of um, uh, appear. I mean, he knew more about it than I did at that point. Um, and he has actually gone on now to, uh, he's graduated and has a professional career where uh, working for a major newspaper where part of his job is to produce podcasts. So uh, <laughs> uh, these are real skills as well that are involved in, in, in this area. So, um, so I want to give you a, a sense of, of what I do with podcasts and, and really uh, we're going to take some time to look forward to conversation with all of you. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, we'll hear more from you um, during questions. Um, so Shall we continue with our second speaker? Uh, but let me see if Lena is here. Yep, Lena's just here. She is. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Lena? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and I'm sorry, I had uh, trouble joining for some reason, but I'm, I'm glad to have made it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So yeah, I'm sorry I missed a, a bit in the beginning there. So um, really, I have to say, I, I, find it quite wonderful to get a chance to to be here and to, to hear from all of you because I'm quite quite new to podcasting and um, I only um, I feel like my approach was really very basic because I um, was you know also in the middle of digital teaching and it was going quite well but I thought well you know I, maybe I could be doing more and I was attending um, like a wonderful keynote by a scholar that I'd also planned on assigning in my in my podcast, um, uh, Sue Lanza, she's so wonderful. And so I thought, well, it would be so cool if I, if my students had attended the keynote as well. And then I thought, oh, I could, you know, maybe I could make this happen. And I, I asked Sue whether she wanted to be on a podcast with me. And um, so basically I did that with a lot of the, the reading that I planned on assigning. And there were also topics that um, I was really interested in or that my students wanted to know more that I then found um, people that were working on that. So I feel like um, also for my own sort of research scope is, was a really interesting tool. And um, I then kind of structured my seminar in a way that I had a session in which I would introduce the, the topic to the students and give them a sense of so they would be prepared for a somewhat more specialist conversation, um, some background. And then every other session, they would have um, the, the short reading assignment and a podcast in which I talked to the same person, which immensely helped them also relate to, to their written work. Um, and then I would always be uh, online in the same Zoom room. So if the students wanted to come chat um, about what they'd heard, they could, but it was a voluntary thing. Um, so that was usually then kind of a small group, uh, more of a conversation rather than, than input from me. And the, the students received that very well. They, all of them really enjoyed the podcast and had a different access to, to research. And they also said in particular, hearing from younger researchers who are also like kind of saying, well, I don't know yet, I still have to find out. And they are like, they always feel like they, they expected to know everything. And I keep just, absolutely not. Um, that really helped them, but also to be honest, for me, it, it was just very enriching to build this network, to get a chance to, um, oh, what was uh, Latif Nasser just said something. He said, uh, I go purposefully dumb. And I did that with several of my conversations as well to feel like it's so nice to get a chance 
to just ask the first question that pops into my head rather than have to ask a specialist question. So yeah, I think both for the students and for me, um, this is very helpful, but again, kind of a rather basic approach to podcasting, I think. That's still wonderful. <laughs> um, thank you for your input and we are gonna get back to you during questions. Um, do you wanna add anything else? Uh, no, oh, I thought we were keeping it super short, so uh, I thought um, just if, kind of the basic structure. My podcast is called Queer Lit. It's about queer I, lit. Okay. And <laughs> you know, for the interested parties. Thank you. Then we are going to continue with our third and last speaker today. Um, yeah, so hi, everyone. I'm uh, Dan Dissinger. So um, part of like how I bring podcasting into... Uh, the classroom is, you know, from a writing standpoint, because uh, at Southern Cal University of Southern California, I teach um, writing, uh, first year writing, and then an advanced writing class as well. And um, some of the, you know, I found that a lot of times students, you know, were having, you know, a lot of trouble kind of getting into the text that we might be reading, or also like being engaged in the idea of like classroom discussion. And so, Sometimes, like when I started introducing podcasting into the class, just as like almost like a supplement to the reading, students seem to really attach and really connect to the idea of listening to a conversation about ideas or about how a group or two people exchange and have this discourse, right? And, you know, sometimes when we teach writing, we talk about them um, entering a space of discourse, you know, enter a discourse space with your ideas. And it kind of seems abstract because you're trying to say, writing a paper enters and in, entering into a discourse. The podcast really gives them a real tangible understanding of like what that looks like and what that sounds like. And, and the other thing is that we've, you know, like everyone's saying, like there, these are real transferable skills, you know, like Darby was saying, like one of his students goes, went off and now has a job. And, and one of the things he does is create podcasts. These are actual transferable skills that, um, that students are learning. And it just kind of reconnects them to the idea of like owning their ideas, you know, like, so there's much more of a creation and a, um, a personal aspect to it. Um, and I would say the last part is like, for me, like I love watching students, not just, you know, engage in listening to the podcast, though, then when they decide to make one, like as a part of my class where like they can do a very multimodal project. And when the students go and say, I want to, you know, I want to do a podcast, the, the content that comes out of it is, is so, there's so much depth to it because they're actually are engaged in making this space happen. And they are really surprised that they're actually, you know, interested in something and that other people are going to also be interested and that they can find people to talk to um, that are interested. And I think that it just kind of shows them that, you know, they're not just learning in a vacuum and they're not just like handing something to me. They're not just um, being graded because, they have to get to the next step. Like there's an assessment that's more student generated in my class, but the idea is that this becomes much more a part of who they are and they really take it uh, much more seriously because it's now, it's also out in the public and there's a real audience. So, you know, just that in, in the idea of assigning podcasts as text, but also just assigning, seeing them move into podcasting is really exciting to kind of watch. That would be like my little five minute spiel or three minutes. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thank you. Um, so shall we open the floor for questions from our participants? Sure. Okay. I would love to answer as many questions as I can. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and do we have any? Oh, okay. Maybe. Um, okay. So how are we going to do that? participants will be asking questions through chat or 
They can do both. If you, you know, if people have a question, you can just chime in or raise your, if you, I think you can do the hand raise, or if you want to type it in the chat as well, you could do both. Okay. So anybody who has a question, could you please use the chat box? And Excellent. There we go. Great. Um, so yeah, Kristen, um, go ahead and ask your question. Can I speak out loud or should I use the chat? No, you can speak out loud. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for this uh, presentation. I, um, I teach uh, foreign language, so I teach in Spanish. And so I've been um, this semester for the first time I'm having my students um, both listen to and create a podcast of their own in Spanish, which is a whole nother uh, since it's their second language, it has a whole nother set of complications. But um, my questions more have to do with um, assigning students to make podcasts. But I understand the focus of this panel is assigning podcasts as texts. Should I table my questions for later? Or since a couple of you have mentioned assigning students to make podcasts, are those questions for a game? I think you should go ahead and ask okay. your question. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, my two questions are, um, in what forums are you having students publish their podcasts and share with real world audiences? And then my second question is, um, what tend to be some of the challenges that students have when making their own podcast? I'm interested in the process, not only the technology, but the, the writing process and the creation process. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I would I don't I'll jump in and then if anyone else wants to answer in the group yeah. because like my I've been moving a lot of my writing classes to medium so my students write publicly right away so everything we do is public so they're already aware of the public nature of what we're going to do so um when it comes to podcasting um I try to also make sure that one they're not spending any money so like I'm, I know that like Anchor is free so that they can jump on Anchor and develop a podcast. Um, and that's just all audio, right? And it's very intuitive and it's very simple to use. I've, several students have used Anchor. Several students have also just kind of, in a way, it was like, I don't want it public to everyone, but public to the class. So sometimes we create audio files and put it into maybe a Google folder that only the class has access to. Um, private YouTube links that are unpublished, like depending on how they want to do it. Um, but we try not to make it too difficult in the, you know, to try to make everyone, um, you know, to make it accessible for everybody. Um, and I would say like a lot of the times the podcasts that my students make are more uh, free form type conversational podcasts, like they're interviews, but they're more exchanges. They, one student wrote, did a podcast called uh, First Gen and I, which was about his experience as a first generational student at USC. And then he had four episodes where he had a group of other first generational, uh, first generation students that he knew at USC. And they spoke about specific issues and stuff like that. And then um, it's a really, I mean, it was really great. Um, some of the episodes were almost like two hours long. But the thing is, like, he, you know, I, tr I, then he the, the writing aspect is like a reflective piece so i try to leave it as open as possible to seeing how they want to create the podcast and i try to walk them through as much as it of it as i can but i try not to make it as like focused on like very very well produced in a way like you know sound and music is like you know trying to get there to content yeah yeah i think like like dan i uh I do that depending on the assignment, depending on the course, um, whether this is something that's being shared just with the class, whether this is something that's being shared publicly, anything that's being shared publicly, I, I always make sure that it's that the students want to do that and actually have them, you know, sign something separately to say, yes, I do want this available uh, publicly because, you know, certainly that, that, um, for many students, that, that's not a, a proper expectation. And for many institutions, and I think that's something that um, 
should probably be said here is that um, the, the software or, or apps that you may use, you know, your institution may have a, an approved list of what things can and cannot be used, how they can be used. Um, but it, but I, I'm certain that you can find some, some things to offer to students that will fit within, you know, what your institution allows. Um, many learning management systems are starting to incorporate podcasting as uh, another element um, within them. So that's going to be something we're going to see happening in the, um, in the years ahead. Um, uh, the other thing I want to encourage you to do is to talk with your librarians, um, because so many academic libraries are offering uh, support uh, anywhere from, you know, a very basic support to, in some cases, a really advanced level of support um, for, for podcasting efforts. And so um, that's something that I mentioned that I'm a librarian. Uh, I don't do that, <laughs> but I have colleagues in the libraries who do. And so um, I, I've worked with them, brought them in to, to talk about the, you know, how to actually produce a podcast. Um, I have a colleague who can come and, and teach the students how to do that in 10 to 15 minutes uh, in terms of creating like a basic podcast like you're talking about for um, that isn't, you know, that high level of production that's necessarily going to be public. So um, really take advantage of, of your libraries. And like I say, make sure that you're aware of what the, the rules are at your institution for the use of, of um, particular, particular outside, you know, third-party software applications. Great. Um, Lena, would you like to jump in? Would you like to say something or? Uh, I would love to, but I can't because I've never I, I've never had students make podcasts. So okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Shall we continue with the next question? Um sure. actually we have a few in the chat. Mm -hmm. And I guess Jennifer's question is quite valid. Shall we continue with her question? Do yeah. you want me to read it? Sure. Okay. How have you thought about or modified your teaching with podcasts for non-native English speakers? I'm really struggling with students for whom the various American dialects and rapid speech that is characteristic of podcasts really makes it hard to learn from. Even if there's transcripts, the intonation, pacing, etc., makes it harder for them, whereas writing uses punctuation. That's a great question, actually. Um, Daniel? Would you like to say something? <laughs> sure. Um, I, I I typed a, an answer in there, but it, I feel like there this is a real hard part to like assigning a podcast and assigning anything audio, right? Like mm -hmm. you know, if I assign music or anything, you know, it's also students who, you know, don't um, also learn well audio in in, in a way through audio. Um, so. I listen to a lot of podcasts in order to try to figure out like also which one is very clear, which, you know, which podcasts are very, you know, the pacing isn't as, um, as fast, right. You know, that the host is aware of things like that. I feel like sometimes like if I assign, um, when I assign like on being, if I use on being yeah, Krista Tippett is very like her pace is very, very slow, but, yeah. and methodical. And so like when I, when I do that, that's okay. When I've assigned even some for my own podcast, people are like, okay, it's a little too fast. So I try not to do that. But if the guest was really good, I try to get them to, you know, to listen to that. Mm -hmm. The other thing, it's like, it's almost like when we assign readings, there's, there's always, there's always a population in the class where the reading doesn't, you know, is hard to dive into, or the podcast is hard to dive into, or we watch something in another group in the class is, is having a hard time, you know, getting into it. So I try to do things that are complimentary. So if I assign a podcast, I might assign a reading that's complimentary to it. So that kind of the ideas can be developed, even though we yeah. might not be doing all the same thing. So trying to find that middle ground of like complimentary source material. That's actually a great um, 
idea having this complementary source uh, for students who cannot uh, fully follow the podcast. Yeah. Um, Darby, would you like to say something? Yeah, we have, I mean, of course, we have students too um, with, with just basic accessibility issues. And so that's something that's really important. I make sure that I don't assign podcasts for which I don't have a really good transcript. And I'm not talking about an auto-generated transcript. I'm talking wow. about a solid edited transcript. So um, just like, I, I, you know, that's, that's, that's just a, that's a basic thing to make sure that there's, there's equal access. Um, the, uh, the other thing is, is that many podcast players, and I know, I don't know exactly how to do this, but I'm sure somebody in this session does, but I know that I have students who uh, use podcast players and they have, um, they have options to slow down or speed up the rate of the podcast. And right. so that's something that I know many of them um, do take advantage of. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, again, I mean, I, 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 I don't go into a course and assign just podcast. I try to look for a variety of, of media. So I've got, and, and, I, and I, I think that that's going to end up being more equitable that way because some uh, some students are going to learn better with video. Some are going to learn better with podcasts. Some are going to be learning better Great. with reading text. Mm -hmm. I, I assign graphic novels. I assign all kinds of things uh, because, you know, there, there's this, well, there's just all these wonderful formats out there. But I have found podcasts to be one that the students tend to really resonate with. Um, and when it comes to, again, when it comes to creation, I think, you know, Dan was talking about, you know, from your perspective as a, as a composition instructor, uh, you know, we talk about, and I think students have a hard time understanding this concept of voice in writing. Um, they have no problem understanding the concept of voice in podcasts. Well, not. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Um, Lena, would you like to uh, jump in and uh -huh. say something? Yeah, I would. So first of all, thank you for that note on voice. I I um, have already been teaching for eight hours today and I was teaching a block on voice uh, in spoken word poetry versus in written poetry. So, uh, but yeah, I think it's important to think about um, not just uh, what students understand, but how they learn well. So that's also why I like this kind of, why I like having similar content in different formats. So I quite enjoy having, um, being able to assign a scholar's text uh, and then talking to the same scholar or at least, you know, talking to or assigning a work they reference heavily so that I have some overlap of content for the, for the students depending on which part they relate to more. And then um, with, teaching, uh, I, th I think some of this has already like similar suggestions have been in the chat, but um, I, I also teach a lot of uh, non-native speakers. I'm obviously a non-native speaker myself, but um, I find that um, introducing what they will listen to um, and giving sort of not just some of the vocabulary, but also I think someone uh, suggested the structure is also quite relevant. So there are some questions in the podcast that they know to expect and of course um, I ask them so I, I have the, the luxury there that I can't just introduce it but they will be familiar with my voice so I think there's kind of an anchor where if they get a bit lost um, they know what to expect and they they know there will be a voice that they they will be used to they will be able to understand um, so I, that's yeah that's also a reason why uh, I've sometimes been a bit hesitant with assigning other podcasts because I, I thought I had listened to some where I was like, wow, this is great, but I would have to spend a lot of time introducing background so that um, all my students would be able to follow. Um, but yeah, I find this and um, as, as you said also, Darby, combining uh, different media. So having like, having a video, having a scholarly text, having literary text, 
and having a podcast um, somewhere in my teaching that center on the same subject. So at, at least, so hopefully there will be one thing that the student can really relate to. Um, I right. find very helpful. Definitely, like yeah. exposing students to different formats mm. and experience. Uh, I think Kenneth, you had your hand up way before, so <laughs> we had this conversation. Uh, did, I know you typed a question, but would you like to ask your question? Um, sure, I can. I, I maybe still at least half relevant. Um, I was I was thinking about the kind of relationship between you know auditing podcasts, using them as texts, and and student production of the podcasts. Um, and I've had a little chance to do it in sort of upper level classes, but I'm thinking about, um, you know, second level college writing classes now where, um, uh, where, where podcasting might be a useful kind of extension of, of your kind of research writing uh, practices. And I guess what particularly interests me is the kind of notion that so many podcasts are kind of engaged in trying to take specialized knowledge and uh, make it accessible to broader audiences. So really thinking about like how the humanities can can project its relevance uh, to the broader world and 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 getting students involved um, in that activity of thinking about their own writing and research uh, as being useful in that in, in in that in that sort of vein. Um, so it's it's kind of analogous to some colleagues of mine who who do work with students, um, you know, can, editing and contributing to Wikipedia as kind of suggesting that they have a role to play in the public construction of knowledge um, and and the the place that I'm stuck right now in, in thinking about how I might um, uh, try to do this uh, in a in a in a class that isn't going to be dedicated to that is is really just sort of thinking about um, kind of how to structure that in a way that students who might not have um, a lot of prior exposure could um, be successful in doing it how how to what, what kind of choices to make about emphasis in terms of like um, planning and scripting, um, you know, how much emphasis to put on production uh, or to allow that to kind of um, play out as, as, you know, in varied ways, depending on students' prior experiences. Um, and, and some of those, I guess, implementation questions that, that it seems like a few of you at least have wrestled with. Um, Daniel? Would you like to go first? Sure. Um, I think like when it comes to, you know, the aspect of like getting a student and like bringing them into the world of like kind of pod, uh, of podcasting and like what, what comes first. And I, I, I think about it as like, you know, when they're developing or, you know, developing their paper project, right? Like I'm very want that I want them to kind of understand like well what's going to be the purpose of this singular project that I'm doing right like as a writing project what do I want the audience to take away after they've read it so if I like can transfer that idea of purpose and that idea of like takeaways or teaching of you know something and exploring something on their end to the podcast then I feel like you know, we're, we're on a good, we're on a good path already. The production part and all that stuff, like I try to like go, I, I, do, I don't really like do too much of that idea because it, we can be there forever talking about, you know, editing and stuff like that. So I try to get them to kind of, I give them some of the editing tools that I use that are very simple um, and free and everything like that. And, but at the same time, you know, when I, assess work in my class like the students are generating the rubric so they've already generated it so if it's about a podcast and they're just like what's most important to be assessed is content you know what's most important to be assessed is like are there takeaways for the audience right um our student you know are, is the audience being engaged and, and things like that right if they want just like when we assess writing um with the rubric like where you know standard the standard English, like, you know, grammar stuff, like that's always at the bottom of the rubric because I want them to front load ideas and I want them to be much more concerned with kind of creating content that is engaging. You know, someone in the chat said something so awesome and I just want to get to uh, Kim uh, said, exposing students to different voices and dialects helps with a certain level of decolonization and uh, students need to know that there is a space for their native dialects. That, that That's so important because you know, we uh, assigning even readings that do that, right? Or assigning like um, 
like multilingual multilingual readings and you know readings that play with the this idea of language and how and just languaging from that core voice that they have and showing them that that matters so when the podcast comes out it's not just like so sterilized it has those types of part, the parts of them that they have. I had a student once do, it was just conversations he recorded in his house and the conversations were multilingual. And I'm sitting there listening to it and he's reflecting on it in other episodes or in writing. And I'm engaged in it. I might not know what the length, what that's being said in the conversation, but he's providing another aspect for me. So they've, they'll, once they have like that freedom and they're used to it, they kind of take they kind of take to it a little bit. And I don't think we have to worry too much about the idea of like, you know, production. I think it's like, what do I want them to like get the audience engaged in? And also what do they want to engage in? That's kind of where I start. Yeah, I wanted to jump in and say how much I appreciated uh, Kim Fox's comment there as well. Um, I think that is, it's, it's so important when we assign text to read, um, most students read them in their own voice, regardless of what you know what the writer's uh, voice uh, was. Um, and so uh, there's you know the the podcast uh, almost forced the students into that uncomfortable position of realizing that oh this is somebody who um, who sounds other. Um, and that's, that's really important. I think too, that academic writing, when we assign academic writing, there's this process with academic writing where it all comes down, it all starts to sound the same. And podcast again, really, uh, because the, this is where, um, you know, even if you're using the, you know, uh, like Lena, I love what you're doing with you know, interviewing scholars and, and, and writers and poets. That it's fantastic because um, it, it just it keeps that it keeps that um, uh, it keeps that diversity at, at at the at the forefront. There's there's not that that narrowing process. Um, and I just totally forgot what I was about to say. There was one other thing that provoked, but maybe I'll remember it in a second. <laughs> okay, sure. Lena, would you like to add anything? Um, thank you. Well, yeah, again, I can't uh, because I'm, I, I don't assign, uh, I don't have the makes podcast. I can't say too much about it, but I do. I have to agree um, that uh, the um, in, well, I, I do assign uh, poetry and spoken word poetry. So I do find that uh, although this is, uh, of course, different from and it's not something that they necessarily record, um, I do find that uh, just having a different means of expression that feels less regulated has the students also understand better how to work with a more regulated medium. So I do find that um, often when in academic writing, uh, people can struggle with understanding that you still have to tell a story, um, even if you're making your argument that going via um, you know, for example, spoken word and um, sort of talking to other students about why a spoken word format works and why another one doesn't and what maybe they could adapt. I do find that that kind of goes back to, to their academic writing as well. And now I think that maybe I should try assigning them to make podcasts. But yeah. Great. Um... Darby, would you like to add anything? Yeah, well, I, let me let me just add in too, in, in response to that too. I, one of the things that I, that is really nice about podcasts as well is that even when you've got the scholars on there, you know, on the podcast, they're talking to the public. Then there's this there's this public engagement aspect that you just don't get when you're assigning the dry peer reviewed article and uh, what have you. Um, it's 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 wonderful too for the students to be able to, to see, to hear the banter, the arguments, the back and forth that even an individual may have when talking about a subject that again, you don't see in the, in the, in the academic paper. 
where there's a structured argument and there's just one argument, sometimes, uh, you know, we have more than one mind ourselves about a topic. And so it's very nice uh, to, that uh, students can hear that. Um, again, you know, when, and I've interviewed a lot of, I've interviewed a lot of scholars for my podcast. I've, I've uh, assigned a lot of scholarly podcasts, but they're not scholarly in the same way as, as the academic article. And that makes all the difference for the students in terms of um, understanding and being able to model their own understanding of the subject matter. Thank you, Darby. Shall, shall we continue with another question? I guess we still have time, like 10 more minutes. Um, I'm looking at the chat. Is there anyone who would like to speak and ask their questions? Okay, let me see the chat box. Um, I think we have someone, Beth, here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> you guys. Right. Um, so I was just wondering, you guys have sort of touched on this, but I was wondering if there's a, a text and podcast pairing that you really enjoy teaching in your class or just a podcast that's really amazing to teach in your classes or just something that we might experiment with just because you've had some success with it in your classes? Um, oh, I've done something really, I mean, something that stood out to me that I thought was kind of fun when we were doing, like, it's not the most, I, I don't even like saying the most scholastic thing, but what it got our students, like my students are talking about, you know, issues of identity. Um, and, and, and so what we did was <laughs> um, we watched the really terrible movie con air with nicholas cage and then we listened to um the podcast um how did this get made and they kind of critiqued the the movie went through it june diane rayfield did a really actually amazing um critique of masculinity and hyper masculinity in con air which i thought was so amazing and at the same time you know we're um we were reading um uh, on top of that, like we read in my class, like pedagogy of the oppressed. So we're talking about banking education and what it means to kind of have banking models of gender or banking models of identity out in the media. So there was like three parts happening, like all at the same time. And so everyone in the class had something like the readers had the readings, the, the listeners had the, the, you know, the, the podcast and the, the people who can, you know, visually are learning like looked at the movie and it kind of garnered a gigantic conversation about all these, you know, concepts of identity that were, you know, very misrepresented in horrifying ways in that film, but also how that banking education that Frere talks about plays out in the public if someone is constantly fed these types of like, um, these ideas on identity. Um, and I mean, not to plug my own podcast, but I use like the first episode as well of my podcast with a colleague of mine when we talk about voice and we talk about names and we talk about um, writing and, and things like that. And we pair it with, I pair it with um, Vershana Shanti Young's article, Should Writers Use Their Own English? And it kind of like kind of sets the tone for the course to be like, this is what writing is going to be like, meaning like, I have a say in how I say something. So also trying to do that is really important right at the beginning for, for my class. Um, Lena, uh, would you like to say something? Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure I have, uh, I have great input on this um, because again, for me, so much was kind of uh, handmade, but um, I, um, I have, uh, I have worked with a, a student very closely on like a um, um, graduate research project on um, country music, and uh, we, I, I let her work on the podcast Dolly Parton's America, 
um, which, and I was like, this, that worked so well that I, um, I would love to go back and teach another class on, on music and literature and do uh, assign Dolly Parton's America. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I haven't actually, I've only worked with, uh, with a specific student on it um, for whom that, that worked really well to get to where she wanted to take her project, but um, yeah. Thank you, Darby. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna drop one in the, in the chat here, but this is a episode that I've found versatile. Um, so I, as I mentioned, I teach, I teach uh, cultural studies courses on, on, on death. I uh, teach uh, one on um, science and the paranormal. Um, so this is an episode of the show Radio Lab called Haunted. Um, and uh, this is about um, uh, an individual who experiences what may or may not be a haunting and um, the investigation of that and his, his ideas around that. And of course it's radio lab and yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's fun, but, um, but it's really raw too. And I think one of the things that it really does well is to balance between, you know, the sort of the scientific rational mindset that, that the subject wants to bring to this experience and then just um, the emotion and the, um, uh, the, um, the very personal nature, uh, the experiential aspects. And so I've, I've found that useful in both of those courses. And it's, uh, and, and again, I think that speaks to some of the things that, that we were talking about in terms of the, the ability of podcasts to convey kind of more than one thing. Um, Hannah asked about Astonishing Legends. I am familiar with Astonishing Legends. And um, yeah, that's a, that's a fun podcast. I haven't actually used that in in the course but um yeah it's that's a fun podcast my older son finds that one absolutely fascinating wants to listen to that on road trips great so we have another five minutes um shall we take another question or um how should we proceed Daniel, do you have a suggestion? Uh, let me see the chat. I, I just want to say the chat has been so amazing. I just want to thank everyone in the chat. I mean, yeah. it's, it's so great. And I, I just like me before I forget, I, I'm going to drop my email in the chat. So like, you know, things that like people have questions for, or just want to reach out. Like I would, you know, that's my email. So, you know, great. and um. I think Thanks. like, I just want to say like, I think this is not, um, um, I think podcasting is like such like a garage band type of thing. And I love that. I love the idea that like, there's imperfections. There's sometimes when I record, there's like construction next door to me. So you hear that, or I had a guest on, there was like traffic. I mean, outside their apartment, and it's just been like, but that's part of the, that's part of the the fun of it. Right. Like that there's no perfection right like it doesn't have to be perfect and I just think that like that part is what makes it what makes it its own thing and I think I just want to say that like depending on what kind of class you're bringing this into psycho like English class or you know a writing class or what have you um you know it's it's its own thing it's its own mode so like knowing that like it's not we're not translating the writing class to the podcast like i'm using the podcast as part of it and i and then the podcast becomes like its own mode and like learning the the mode is is super important in order to get it to be you know valuable in the course yeah I, yeah thank you i really like the idea of this podcasting being a garage band type of thing that's really interesting. I'll throw in one other thing too: is yeah. uh, okay. you don't have to produce your own podcast. Go be a guest on existing podcasts. Podcasters are always looking for interesting guests, and probably everyone here is an interesting guest. <laughs> and so, 
um, reach out to them and guest on their podcast, let them produce it and use that in your class. Um, you, you may as well. It also gives you a chance to kind of try that out. I, I find, you know, I'm, I, I'm invited to, to, to guest on podcasts all the time and, and uh, wonderful conversations can come up and people ask very interesting questions sometimes. Definitely. Thank you. Lena? Um, I, are, we, are we doing closing remarks now? Or? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I just, uh, I, I really enjoyed this discussion. I'm, I'm encouraged to, to ask my students to make their own little audio pieces now. But I also think that what we were talking about in the very beginning, um, thinking about assigning in different languages, um, in different ways of speaking. Um, I think that that is so, so important, not just for the students to find their own voices, but to, um, to be exposed to different voices, but also to, I think we were talking all about how to make sure they understand everything. I think also to make sure they know it's okay that when they don't understand everything, that um, I think that is, what podcast is a good medium for also that you can also kind of take away the, the pieces that are important for you. But, um, you know, if there's a bit you're missing, uh, nobody, nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna take your, take your grade down for that or something. Um, yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. I just want to say one, like, and just add to be like, and then also be part of a group that's like when, you're always asked to come to understanding someone else's voice. It's okay like to kind of empower groups of students and to empower students who are always asked to try to understand and instead flip that and be like on the other side of being like, come to me now. And like, you have to understand this. Like I'm giving you information, it's okay. Like that I think like making it this like amazing exchange is what we kind of kind of breaks down those like and decolonizes the idea the ideas and languages and and knowledge instead of like always trying to translate it through something that we're some sort of standard that's very white and hegemonic and everything so yeah. well um that was wonderful thank you i would like to thank all my all our speakers today and our participants for their comments suggestions questions Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. Thanks.